Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin, but more specifically, we're going to talk about how the stable coin supply ratio can provide insights into the price of Bitcoin. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. We, of course, do have several different tiers, including a free one. Make sure you check that out. Link is in the description below. Let's go ahead and jump in. So the stablecoin supply ratio is, is something that I don't believe I've talked about here on the public channel. But as you guys know, the stablecoin market is quite interesting. And it's so, it's so interesting, of course, that we look at the dominance of Bitcoin, including stablecoins and excluding stablecoins, because it, it sort of tells us uh, something different depending on exactly how we look at it. So what I want to do in this video is, of course, we're first going to go over the definition of the stablecoin supply ratio, and then we're going to look at a couple, um, you know, sort of derivatives from from that metric that we can that we can really start to explore. But if you're not familiar with it, the stablecoin supply ratio is equal to Bitcoin's market cap divided by the stablecoin market cap. And the reason we we might be interested in something like this is because it can essentially give us the, an extent of the stablecoin buying power and estimate its potential to move the price of Bitcoin in various directions. Okay, so right now you can see that the blue line here is the stablecoin market cap. And it's actually been slowly uh, trending down a little bit recently after after a pretty, pretty nice and sustained move up for quite a long period of time. If we hide that, and then we just look at the stablecoin supply ratio, which again is just Bitcoin's market cap divided by the stablecoin market cap. Okay, you can see that it's generally been trending down, right? It's been trending down. So Bitcoin's market cap, when you divide it by the stablecoin market cap, this over time has been trending down. I might say, well, why has it been trending down, right? Well, if you think about it, if the stablecoin market is going up, but Bitcoin's market cap is not going up really enough to offset it, then you would expect it to go down because you're dividing Bitcoin's market cap by a larger number, right? You're, you're dividing it by generally a larger number. In the short term, it's been increasing. But again, over the macro scale, it's been decreasing. So again, you could argue that the stablecoin market has, has been increasing quite rapidly. And so over the long haul, we're, we're seeing this metric go down. One of the things we can do, though, is, is we can look at the, the Bollinger Band. So this is the stablecoin supply ratio, uh, but we're, we're looking at the Bollinger Bands of this specific metric. And if you're not familiar with the Bollinger Bands, it's just a set of traditional um, or you know, traditional trend lines that a lot of people use that are plotted two standard deviations away from the 200-day simple moving average. Okay, so in this case, we're showing you the Bollinger Bands of the stablecoin supply ratio. So it's, of course, looking at the 200-day estimate of that. And one of the things you'll notice is that this orange line, so this sort of orange line, it pierces through occasionally to the downside and occasionally to the upside, right? We see this happen time and time again. We saw it happen in December 2018. We saw it happen in June of 2019. We briefly saw it over here in October 2019, but it was very short-lived. We also saw it back over here in March of 2020. We know what happened after that. Uh, we saw it occur back in early 2021. We, it, we went under it in June of 2021. And, and you can kind of see where it goes below it and where it goes above it. But what do you notice, right? What do you notice? When it goes below it, it usually means we're going to see some upside soon, right? So you can see when it goes below, it generally means, all right, well, yes, price action is pretty terrible right now, but you'll tend to see it go back in the other direction, right? But in the same way, when it gets sort of, you know, too high over here, right? So when it goes above these Bollinger Bands, which again are, are a set of trend lines, two standard deviations from the 200-day SMA, right? So it's showing you when when we're hitting these extremes. When it goes above it, above the upper one, it doesn't, I mean, it doesn't mean that you're immediately going to see price action go down. Just like going below it doesn't mean you're immediately going to see price action go up. I mean, you can see we went below it over here in November and we didn't really bottom until December. In the same way, we went above it over here in May, 
but the market did not really turn around until June. So there's about a month lag or so, a month or two lag. So again, you know, just because you see it go below it doesn't mean you should say, all right, it's time to put on your rally cap. But just because it goes above it doesn't mean it's necessarily immediately time to sort of call for a dump. But what it shows you is that there are some subtle shifts in the trend and hey, it, it's likely going to be coming to an end soon is what it historically tells us. You know, and you can go forward, right, in March of 2020, it, it showed you here, you know, clear as day. We were below it again, and it and it generally was indicative of, of more upside coming. Um, over here in January 2021, you can see we went above it, and right when we went above it, we actually had a pretty nice correction back down. And yes, we did have this distribution phase, but arguably, you know, we still ultimately were sort of hugging the top part of this for a while, and it was indicative of an eventual move coming back to the downside. And then when it came back to the downside over here, you know, it was sort of like, hey, yeah, price action is terrible once again, but usually we'll see it go back in the other direction eventually, right? And we see this play out time and time again. You know, when it goes below it, a trend shift for a while, right? Even over here in June, a trend shift for a while where price action generally goes higher. But right now we find ourselves above it. Now again, what does that mean? Well, it doesn't necessarily mean that the trend shift has to occur immediately, but what it does show is that, you know, it is getting somewhat, you know, somewhat hot and we're likely going to see this sort of at least, you know, likely reverse some reversion to the mean um, at some point in the not so distant future. Again, there can be a, you know, a, a month or two delay, something like that. But historically, it, it does show that eventually it, it, we, we're not too far away from seeing some type of reversion back to the mean. So I thought this was an interesting indicator. And I know there's some people that are looking at the, you know, the comparison between you know, this 2019 move and, and the 2023 move. I do think it's probably worthwhile for people to also compare to 2015. I think we can get tunnel vision if you just look at 2019 because you just see this parabolic rally that went up 4x. If you look at 2015, you see something completely different. And, and they both, again, came a year after years where it was down only, right? 2014, 2018, of course, now 2022. And so you could argue that we're already in that sort of you know higher extension level when you're talking about the stable coin supply ratio and, and getting above the Bollinger Bands, right? And you can see it happen in 2019 and, and we spent from about May 11th to June 19th, so about five weeks above it. Here, we got above it on January 20th, and we just crossed back below it February 24th. So again, about five weeks, although we did spend um, a few days, you know, a few days below it, right, from maybe almost a week or so. So... When you look at it like this, it, I mean, it does sort of, sort of show a slightly different story, and it, I think it's somewhat compelling. Not to say, you know, not to say that uh, you know that, that Bitcoin needs to reverse course and and go down a lot immediately, but what it does indicate is that this trend is is ultimately fighting a losing battle here in the short term, is what it has historically meant, right? Again, I mean, I I. I would be remiss if I didn't at least try to explain the, the data as it, you know, as it, as I have it in front of me. I mean, you could always point to prior times when it happened. And yes, sometimes the price went a little bit higher, but eventually we entered back into that downtrend when it got into these levels, right? And that's really, I think, the point that that you should, that, that I'm trying to sort of communicate here is, is that, you know, you will typically see it sort of reverse course and go back the other way. Another way to look at this is to look at it as an oscillator, right? So the, the you know, measuring it a little bit differently. And one of the ways when you look at it like this, it, it's also somewhat compelling. What do you notice? When it's all the way down here, it's a good thing, right? A lot of buying power. And we see this go up quite a bit, right? So when it's all the way down here, it doesn't mean the price is going to immediately go up. But when you start seeing this trend higher, it, it typically means good things are coming, even if it's not obvious immediately, right? So, I mean, yes, we went down in the price a little bit during, you know, for a few more weeks, but we still ultimately broke out to the upside. But then over here, once we got, you know, once we get pretty far spent to the upside, like we did back in, in June as well, or May and June, this shows you that 
again, it's fighting a battle that is difficult to sustain for too many more weeks. So for instance, when it peaked over here, it peaked in, you know, in, in late May. And Bitcoin continued its rally until late June. So it, it lasted about another month. But again, it does show that it was fighting a, a difficult battle to sustain for too much longer. You can see over here, we, we sort of hit at least a local top back in January, late January. And then we came back up to a very similar level in mid-February. Okay, something to keep in mind. Now, I don't know if it's going to go any higher, but this at least does indicate to me that, yes, you know, could the trend last a little bit longer? Maybe. But history shows us that this will likely eventually resolve back to the downside where you're, where you're going to see some type of reversion to the mean. And it's not that Bitcoin can never go up against the U.S. dollar, right? It just shows you the stable coin, you know, the stable coin supply ratio. The purpose of it, again, is to show you the buying power. Okay, so the an estimate in its potential to move the price of Bitcoin. So if it's already up here, it's not going to be as able to move it as if it were down here at lower levels. Okay, so the higher it is, right, the higher this is, the harder it is for the stable coin supply, right, to move the price of Bitcoin. The lower it is, the, 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 the easier time the stable coin supply has at, at moving the price of Bitcoin. So this is ultimately what I wanted to convey uh, by this metric. I'm not, again, I, I want to be clear, it's not meant to show you the immediate price action of Bitcoin, but it's, it's meant to sort of show you that when you get to low levels, like you were back in June, hey, it means, you know what, you're likely going to start to see this, the price go back in a positive direction for a while. When it gets to high levels, you get to that point where you think, all right, it's starting to fight a, a difficult battle here. And as much as we would like for the price, or as much as many people would like the price of Bitcoin to just you know go up only for a while, um, this does generally dictate that, yeah, it could have a few more weeks, a couple more months left in it, but it's likely not going to sustain it for too much longer before you see some type of reversion to the mean. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out Into the Cryptoverse Premium at IntoTheCryptoverse.com. See you guys next time. Bye.